so the reason why we, we got to this point was we plotted these two points and I asked you, do you think this graph looks like a straight line? Can we just throw a line like this? Because I imagine the people in this class have probably graphed some lines, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Some lines and some coordinate yeah. planes, yeah? yeah. But that, hmm, sometimes we don't quite understand what we're doing there, so that's why I'm bringing this up. Like a line, Alex? I thought it could be, be a line if it went through the middle. Or okay. zero, zero is. All right. If it goes through the middle, then maybe it's a line? Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you mean by that? <coughs> it. There's some words here. It. Okay. What's that? Goes through. What does that really mean? It goes to the point zero, zero. Okay, what is it? The line. Okay, the line. Graph. What is this line? What? What is this line? This this proposed line, this supposed line. Okay. Okay, that's a really big one. I want that to stick in your brain, so maybe you should write that down or get a tattoo of it from your forehead backwards. You see it every time you look in the mirror. Okay. A, a graph, any graph, whether it be a line or whatever shape, it is an infinite number of points, okay? So a graph can, it, there's a lot of things that you could say about a graph, to describe a graph, but that's a really important one. Infinite number of points, okay? And what, the reason that's so important is because there is a, a misunderstanding about graphs that oh there just draw some points and then you connect them as if the points and the shape that you connect the points with are two different things. You see what I'm saying there? Yeah. They're not two different things. They're the exact same thing. So if they're the exact same thing, then why are we drawing these shapes? Alex? Because it goes, um, the line goes in either direction forever. But again, the line is an infinite number of points. So why are we drawing the line? If the line is made of a bunch of points, why aren't we drawing all these points? Sean? The line just shows us something. It just shows that there is points there. We don't have to make it an infinite number of dots. So why aren't we making this infinite number of dots? Because it's time consuming. Of course, it's too time consuming. We don't have enough time, all right? A lot of times the things we do in, a, in math in general, not just the math class, but in the field of mathematics is why are we doing this over and over and over? We can take advantage of these patterns that we're seeing and uh, kind of shortcut around this, okay? That's one of these shortcuts around is drawing the, the graph rather than plotting all these points. So if it, so we got to what it is, it, the graph, whatever the shape might be, okay, which is made of an infinite number of points, which will help us with this next part, goes through, it goes through. What does that mean exactly? Okay. Like goes through or passes the line of origin. Okay. Origin. That's it. So the line passes through the origin. Okay. Let's get uh, two more descriptions of what goes through exactly means. John? Crosses paths. Okay. Crosses paths. So path of the graph and the path of, of the, you know, these, these two guys meeting, the origin. Alex? It crosses through X and Y. Crosses, crosses through an X and a Y, okay. Uh, what we're looking at here is a graph. It's a bunch of points, right? And if it goes through, okay, there's some terms in math that, that when you start to think about them, they're incredibly vague. They're like goes into, like one number goes into another number, right? It's an incredibly vague thing to say about two numbers. What does that mean exactly? So what does goes through mean exactly? It means, since this is made of an infinite number of points, one of those points is where? We were talking about that Alex brought up. The origin. The origin. One of those points is of the origin. Okay, so to, to recap what Alex was saying, he was saying that it, the graph, it's an infinite number of points, goes through the origin, then maybe it's a line. Right? If it goes through the origin, it means one of those infinite number of points is at the origin. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? So, is one of those infinite number of points at the origin? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, I think we're mixing up two things. Is one of those points at the origin for this line? Yes. But the question ultimately is, is that line the graph of this function? No. Right? Does this function's graph, right, the infinite number of points that represents this function, all the possible inputs and outputs, does one of those points go to the origin, yes or no, and how can you be sure? I saw Johnny shake his head, so I'm going to force a, an answer out of Johnny. You say no, and, and why do you, how can you say with confidence, the graph of this function does not have a point at the origin? Cadence? So, if you put zero in for x, the zero just like gets rid of everything else, and okay. there's just a positive one left. So, we're going to chop that down to its essential bits. If you plug in zero to this function, you get one. one. I can see it. Zero goes there, zero goes there. Zero squared is zero, negative zero is just zero, zero times negative three is zero, 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 plus one gives you one. Zero gives you one. If there were a point on the origin, what, how would this have played out differently? Josie? It would have been, it would have been zero, zero. It would have been zero, zero. As Alex reminded us earlier, the origin is at x is zero, y is zero. But when x is zero, y is one. Will I ever get zero, zero from this function? No, no. No, try a million times in a row. Plug zero in for x, you'll always get one for y. You'll never get to zero uh, unless it's by accident. So we don't have a point that goes to the origin. And we have as a nicely laid out argument, Alex said, well, I'll put it a little differently. The only way that this graph is a line, a straight line, is if there's a point at the origin, right? Got to. It's, to have that consistent slope, it's got to go through the origin. But it doesn't. It doesn't have a point at the origin. So it's not a what? Not a, not true. Mm -hmm. The graph is not a what? Shape. What shape is it not? Josie? It's not a straight line. It's not a straight line. What is a, the, the name for a shape that's not a straight line? general word that describes a shape that's a not a straight line. Yeah? Is it like a circle? Well, that's really specific. Round. That's a really specific word. Round is a little bit more general. Uh, it's this word that I'm thinking of starts with a C. Circular? Circular is closer, I guess. I mean, it's not closer to the word, but it's getting more general. Curvy, right? Curvy. Here's a word that means not a straight line. It's curvy. It must be some kind of a curve, OK? Uh, so let's find out some more points. <coughs> let's erase that. Find out some more points. Let's uh, have you now. You, you have your homework. You did your homework. What points did you guys find? And then we'll just double check. Negative four, negative three. All right, going way into the negatives. Negative four, negative three. So we'll double check together. Negative four, negative three is a point. So we'll plug negative four in there. We have a negative inside the parentheses. We have a negative four. We square that. It's three times. Negative four plus one. Make sure that if you have any questions about shouldn't that be positive or negative, I guarantee I'm going to do it 100% correctly. But if you have any questions, make sure you ask them. Okay, so negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, which is 16. But we multiply by that negative, so we get negative 16. Sean? Uh, I, um, I thought it was a, at the end of the equation, I, did, I thought it was a plus 3. That's what I wrote down for Oh, it. shoot. I guess that kind of messes up yeah. your stuff. But your graph will actually look, should, yeah. should look exactly like this graph, only since we have a plus 3 instead of a plus 1. It'll just be up two from there. Like every point we find, yours will be two higher. Does that make sense? Because yeah. your number at the very end, when you add your, your last number on, it's two more than everything we'll find. So all your points will be two higher. So that'll at least be a check for you. Okay. 
Um, and you can take your points. If you did it correctly, you should be able to subtract two from everyone mm -hmm. and give. You know, the same. Right? So yours should, yours should be negative one then? Uh, negative one. If you plug in negative four, I don't know if you did. But I'm going to continue. Negative three times negative four is positive 12 plus one. 12 minus 16 is negative four plus one is negative three. And confirmed. Um, so here we go, we've got more points here. Negative four, negative three. Here's a negative four, negative three. There's another point. Well, that kind of took a turn, right? It looked like it was kind of shooting up like this, but here is a point down here. Got another point? Oh, I got I did two. Two. Negative nine. Two, Ooh. negative nine. And let's confirm this. We keep covering up the functions and have to move this out of the way. Two squared minus three times positive two plus one. Two squared is four. There's a negative on that four. Minus three times two. Okay, three times two is six. You got minus six there. Plus one. Negative ten plus one. Negative nine. Confirmed. Okay, two, negative nine. Right. all over the place. Anybody find any other points? Cadence. Negative two plus three. Negative two, three. Negative, negative two squared. Negative three times negative two plus one. Negative two times negative two is four, but we have a negative on that four. Negative three times negative two is positive. Six plus one. Six minus four is two plus one is three. Negative 2, 3 is a point on this graph. Negative 2, 3. Now we have this point here at 3, and this other one has the same y value, even though it's an f in this case, of 3. There's a negative uh, 3, there's a negative 3. Here's a value of one. What do you want to bet that if I were to kind of go over that line of symmetry that seems to be taking shape, that would, I'll find a point there too. Anybody find a point at negative three comma one? Josie found a point at negative three comma one. We'll just take that as confirmation. Okay. What if I went to negative five? Where do you think I'll wind up getting a point there? Negative nine. Negative nine as well. And look at that. It confirms that, well, if I could see straight, confirms that symmetry as well. Let's see a symmetry. Not all graphs have symmetry, but this one happens to have symmetry. Okay. Now, how many points are on this graph? Infinite. Infinite. infinite number. So far, we found a, a finite number, eight of them. Uh, but there are an infinite number available. All right. So. Now let's just kind of guess. If, we, if I plug in 1 half, 0.5, what kind of a number do you think I'll get as my output? Just a guess. If I put in 0.5 for my x, what value do you think I'll get for f for the output? Just a guess. <coughs> well, you'll probably get 3 because 0.5 times itself is 1? Really? No, 0.5 plus itself is 1. 0.5 times itself, that's 1 half times 1 half. How do we multiply fractions? Straight across. Straight across, 1, 4. Oh, okay. 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. Half of a half is a quarter. Mm. Do you think we can make a guess based on the points that are around where we're looking? I'm going to guess like 2.25. You're going to guess if I put in 0.5, you're going to get 2.25. Or negative 2.25. Oh, negative 2.25. Where's my pen? Something's dead. 
dead. was from Brady, negative 2.25 or something. Negative 2.25 would be right around there. What do you think about that guess? A decent guess? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody feel like they have a better guess than that? Sean? Uh, negative 2. Maybe negative 2. Why do you say negative 2 instead of negative 2.25? Because the dot's a little bit, not, it's not, if you drew a line through all three of, all of them. Uh, if you drew a straight line from here to there, it would miss this point. Yeah. So maybe we should put it so that a straight line from this point that we know and this point that we know could catch that point. Yeah. That, I think, helps us make a pretty good guess. Maybe it's like there or <coughs> down here or something. Yeah. What I'm trying to get you to see is like, if we were to connect these with some kind of a shape, well, shouldn't, that, shouldn't we see a pattern in these points? Would you expect to see a pattern in these points? It wouldn't probably be very like jagged like that, right? It probably wouldn't go up like that and come back down. Probably not. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it certainly doesn't seem like it would because so far the pattern looks like it's going down and it's getting a, you know, it's dropping even faster and faster. It's getting steeper and steeper, right? So it seems like that point would fall somewhere in there. Let me just gas cadence. Well, it'd be just a little bit lower because there's a plus one to it. Lower because there's a plus one? So you already have the one that was added to your, your answer or your answer. You think it's lower than this because of the plus one? in there, and 0.5 squared is a 0.25, and there's a 0.5, you know, this is going to be like 3 times 0.5, so it's going to be uh, 1.5, and so then we've got a 0.5 and a 0.25, we're going to add those together, those are not going to like add up to a nice whole number, so yeah, it's going to be some kind of a decimal, I think that would be a good guess. Would it be above 1, just like a little bit? Just a little bit above negative 1, is that what you mean? Or above 1, like up here? There's some negatives in there too, right? There's subtraction. So this stuff is actually subtract. So we get 1.5 and negative 0.25. So negative uh, 1.75 plus one. So it's really negative 0.75, isn't it? Just because it happens to be, like if I plug in a positive 0.5 uh, there, I'll get 0.25 when I square it, and it's negative, and so you know, it all works out the way. And that confirms our suspicions that it should be kind of in line with these other two. Should it be in a straight line, do you think, from here to there is a straight line? No, the whole thing's not a straight line, so probably between two points is not going to be a straight line, right? The closer we get, like between any two points that are really close together, it would almost look like a straight line. It just wouldn't quite be a straight line. Right? Does that make sense? 
Y'all agree with that or no? So if we keep plotting these points over and over and over and over and, and taking guesses about what's between the two points that we have definitely found exactly, right? Like between these two points. Does somebody want to just come up and, and put a point? Like if we were to put a negative 0.5 where they think that point would be? Just throw it up there real quick. So if we were to look at where the, like, if we plug in negative 0.5, Right? We're going to just get some output, right? and we can translate that input and output to some point. Is it, would that put the point here or there, or Josie, come on up and show us your guess from where you think that point would be. All right, I think that's a pretty good guess. Somebody else want to guess for, like, if we plug in negative 3.5, what that point would Wait, be. Wait, which one? For when we plug in negative 3.5. So like, where would the point wind up in that region? That seems pretty good, because that is also symmetrical with this point, right, over here. It seems to make sense. We've been noticing the symmetry. Sean, did you want to throw one up there? Uh, or uh, how about if we plugged in negative 4.5, right? Where would that point be when we plug in negative 4.5? Negative 4.5, yeah, where would that point wind up? Right there. Does everybody think about that guess? That seem good? Mm -hmm. Seems pretty good to me. The thing that I'm trying to get you to understand, because the temptation for students is to jump the gun and say, I got a couple of points, and I'm just gonna throw a line on there, or throw some kind of crazy shape, and they don't really understand that this graph is made of what? A bunch of points, an infinite number of points, and if I plotted all those points, I wouldn't have to connect it with some shape because the shape would just be, it would just exist because I plotted all the points. It's just impossible to do. It's impossible to plot all those points. Okay. So once I start to get the idea of what the shape looks like, how would you describe the shape that you think that all these points would start to make? Like what? What kind of shape? Like, how would you describe the shape that you feel like these these points are making? Josie? It's kind of like the shape of your finger, how it starts to form, it's still brown, so it's going to be bigger and bigger. Okay, so if you look at your, your, your finger, it kind of looks like a finger around at the top like that. Okay. It's a really fat finger. Really fat finger, because it gets like fatter and fatter and fatter. It'll never quite go like kind of straight like a, like a finger does, right? Cone. Maybe a cone? Yeah. Maybe a kind of rounded top? Yeah. You think it's a pointy? No. 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 no I, I think that this pattern that we find with these, these outputs would probably be gradual, not come to an abrupt stop and just dart back down, right? Probably not. So who wants to take the big leap and draw the shape they think that all of the infinite number of points would generate? Give side. Okay, Johnny. He's not been to the board today. Go as far as you want. Good. That's a great looking thing. We can put little arrows on there and say, there we go. This direction. I might change a little bit over here, make it a little more, uh, I guess, less vertical. But that's, what does everybody think? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of the points, for to plot all of them, would eventually make this kind of a shape, like an upside down U, or uh, the way a ball looks if you throw it in the air. Yeah? Kind of looks like a mountain. Like a mountain. A really crazy steep mountain, yes. Yeah. Uh, those are kind that you have to have ropes and stuff to climb. Yeah. So the lesson here, the moral of this story is a graph is an, a bunch of points. We don't draw that shape because that's, you know, the next step. We draw some points and then we draw the graph. The graph is points, right? The graph is a bunch of points. 
So that is good. If you keep that in mind as we go on drawing graphs, we'll do you well.